Live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and this is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. We're the worldwide leader in enterprise tech coverage. Happy to be coming to you from DockerCon 2017 here in the Austin Convention Center, of course in Austin, Texas. My host for the next two days will be Jim Kobielis. Jim, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to join the team. All right, so we'll get to, get to you in a second, Jim, but first of all, it is the fourth year of the DockerCon show. Uh, Docker, the company, just celebrated its fourth year uh, of existence. Uh, uh, CEO Ben Golub uh, started off the keynote. Uh, founder, CTO, chief product guy Solomon Hikes, uh, you know, introduced a bunch of open source in, uh, initiatives, uh, did a bunch of demos. Uh, the first DockerCon event back in 2014, I actually had the pleasure of attending. Uh, it was my favorite show of that year. I uh, got to hear some of these hyperscale guys talk about how they were using containers, how Google spins up and spins down two billion containers in a week. Uh, and there were about 400 people there, and Docker the company was 42 people. Fast forward to where we are today in 2017. Docker the company is, I believe it's 320 people. There's over 5,500 people here. You can see them all streaming in behind me here as the keynote just let out, so we've got two full days here of coverage. Uh, we're, this morning we're going to go, go through a little bit of the news, talk about who we're going to cover. But first of all, I want to introduce you to Jim Kabilis. So, uh, John Furrier sends his regards to the community. Uh, he's real sorry he couldn't make it out, just had to, uh, some things came up at the last minute, so he couldn't come. But stepping in for him uh, with lots of knowledge and experience is Jim. So, Jim, please, for our audience that hasn't gotten a chance to see, you did some intro videos uh, with our crew out in our 4,500 square foot Palo Alto studio at the beginning of the month, but why don't, why don't you tell them you know, what brought you uh, to the SiliconANGLE Media team, your background, and what you're going to be doing. Great, yeah, thanks, Stu. Yeah, I've joined just recently in the last uh, few weeks. I am a Wikibon's a lead analyst for application development, as well as data science and deep learning. I, I treat data science and the development of artificial intelligence as a, a huge and really one of the predominant developer themes now in the business world. And really much of that that's going on in business in terms of development of AI applications is in the form of microservices in containerized uh, 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 format for deployment out to multi-clouds and uh, you know, increasingly serverless computing environments. So I am totally pumped and excited to be at DockerCon and there were some great announcements this morning. I was uh, very impressed that this community is making great progress both on the sheer uh, complexity and sophistication of the ecosystem, but just the amount of support for, for Docker technology, for Kubernetes and so forth, for the, the full range of uh, technologies that enable containerized application development. Hot stuff. Yeah, uh, Jim, and you talk about things like community and ecosystem, and that was definitely the theme here, day one. Uh, Docker did some, uh, some changing in their packaging uh, since we were at the show last year. They now have Docker CE, which is the community edition, focused on the developers, and today was developer day. Uh, everything, I'm pretty sure everything that was announced today is open source, it's in there, it's in the free version. Uh, I expect tomorrow we'll probably hear, hear about more about EE, which is the enterprise, enterprise edition. Yes. Uh, you know, a question I know we all have is, how is the monetization of what Docker's doing uh, you know, progressing. Uh, the press and analyst dinner last night, I heard from a Docker employee and said, look, we all understand we're in the early days of the monetization of Docker, sure. but Solomon this morning said, really, the success of Docker, the company, is tied directly to the ecosystem. Uh, we've got Microsoft coming on today, we've got Cisco, uh, you know, Oracle, uh, you, know, you know, lots of partners coming on this week, talk about how uh, what Docker's doing, what's happening in open source, is going to help a broad ecosystem and all, you know, not just the developers, but enterprises and the companies. So, Jim, what are you looking at uh, this week? What are you hoping to come out of? Uh, what, what grabbed you from the keynotes this morning? Well, grabbing from the keynote this morning is the, uh, pr the maturation of the containerized Docker ecosystem in the form of uh, greater portability in terms of the Linux kit announcement, we'll get to that later, as well as greater customization capabilities of the Mobi project. Um, this is just uh, milestones in the development and maturation of a truly robust ecosystem of innovation. Really, what Docker is all about now, that it's a real platforms company, is, is helping its partners to be raving successes in this uh, rapidly expanding marketplace. So, that's what I see, the chief themes. Yeah, so far, uh, this today. And, and it's interesting. One of the things we've always looked at at Docker is like, what 
does the open source community do? What does the company do? What's the co-op petition play? Uh, two years ago at the show in San Francisco, uh, there was you know taking the container runtime and really making sure that's open source. You had you know the CoreOS guys and the Docker guys hugging. I got a picture <laughs> of uh, you know Ben Golub and Alex Polvey you know standing together, and it was like oh okay you know that little Cold War was over. <laughs> um, Linux Kit is something we're going to look at. They lined up some really good partners. We got Intel, Microsoft, HPE, and IBM. But you know we're going to talk to Red Hat and Canonical yes. uh, and see what they think about this uh, because. From the Linux guys, I've been hearing for the last couple of years, where well, Linux really is containers. It's all, you know, just something that sits on top of containers. Of course, there's the window variant now too, but you know, Linux, you know, you just buy your Linux and containers comes with it. And now we say, oh, we've got Linux Kit, which is I'm going to have a distribution that's fast, optimized, you know, for containers that Docker and that ecosystem they're building is going to do. Containers so. everywhere. I mean, Ben Golub laid it out, or maybe it was Solomon this morning. Containers are really the predominant packaging of applications, large and small, across increasingly not just traditional enterprise and consumer applications, but also the Internet of Things. So, yeah. Yeah. What, Internet of Things and the development of uh, AI for the IoT is a huge theme that I'm focusing on in my uh, coverage for, for Wikibon. So I see a, a fair amount of enablers for that here. Right. And, and Jim, and absolutely, uh, there, was a, there was a big slide with, you know, Docker will be where you need to be. Yeah. So uh, whether you're in the public cloud, uh, of course there's the container services uh, from, you know, we, we've got Amazon ECS right here. Uh, you've got what's going on with Google and their containers. Microsoft Azure, of course. So there, there's so many pieces. So uh, a lot we're going to go through. We've got a full uh, slate of interviews. Of course, everybody can watch here on Silicon Angle TV. If you want to participate in social conversation, John Furrier's actually been banging away. Uh, it's crowdchat.net slash DockerCon is where we're having some of the social conversation. Of course, can always reach out. Uh, I'm just Stu on Twitter. Uh, Jim is James Kobelius, which you'll see on the lower third uh, when we put him up here is where he is on Twitter. If you're at the Expo Hall, you'll see the Expo Halls behind us. We're just in the corner of the Expo Hall, going to be here for two days. Uh, Jim, I uh, want to give you the final word uh, on, on our intro here. Um, come to the end of the day, what, what do you hope to have walked away with? Well, I hope to walk away with a more uh, a rich and nuanced understanding of this ecosystem and the differentiators among the dozens upon dozens of companies here, partners of, of, of Docker. Um, really what I see is a huge growth of the Kubernetes segment in terms of orchestration, scaling of uh, a, a, you know, cluster management for all things to do with uh, not just Docker, but really Container D, which of course Docker recently open sourced, uh, this core container engine. I think this is totally exciting to see this, the vast range of specialty vendors in the uh, providing tools to help you harden your, your containerized uh, uh, microservices environment for your cloud uh, for your cloud native computing requirements. That's that's what I hope to take away. I'm going to walk these halls when I'm not physically on the cube and uh, and talk to the uh, these vendors here. Exciting stuff, innovation. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, so many pieces there, Jim. Uh, you mentioned Kubernetes, of course. Um, there is that little bit of uh, do I use Docker Swarm or do I use Kubernetes? Docker, of course, would like you to use Swarm. Uh, that's what there. There's a big and in fact, that was you know, an excellent discussion yeah, this morning about yeah. Swarm's uh, advantages as well. I don't want to make it sound like I'm totally yeah. shifting towards Kubernetes in terms of my, my preferences. I mean, clearly, it's a highly innovative and dynamic space, so yeah. Docker is making some serious investments in beefing up their entire enterprise stack. Where, 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 where I wanted to go actually with that is the Moby project actually is one of those things I, I saw as a nice maturation of what we hear from Docker. Uh, for the first couple of years, Docker said, Batteries are included, but swappable, which means things like Swarm, we're going to bake it in there, but you can use an alternative. So you want to use Kubernetes, go ahead, and that's fine. And Moby has allowed them to take all the components that are open source, people inside Docker can work on them, people outside can collaborate with them, much more modular. Reminds me of how, when we talk about how you know, development teams work, you know, it's those two pizza teams, Docker has them internal, they're pulling more people in, how is that open source collaboration going to expand? Scalability, I think, is the, is the word that I heard over and over again in the keynote. Scaling of the company, scaling of the product, scaling of the ecosystem, uh, so something we're interested to see. Uh, we've been scaling our operations and we've got you know, two full days here of coverage, so make sure to stay with theCUBE for everything we've got here, and thank you for watching theCUBE.